Good. So welcome back to another installment of um, Exploring Consciousness with the Earth Nouveau Hub. It's really good to have you here. Very exciting. And today we have a topic, um, fetus in the womb. So we're going to work with the fetus in the womb healing, creating, dharmic um, road and finding your purpose, whatever that is really, whatever you want to use that fetus in the womb, that going back to the blueprint and connecting back into the fetus in the womb. And our, our Laura has written a meditation. So we are probably gonna go straight into that, do the meditation. All I'm saying probably, or maybe Laura will say that anyway, I don't know, just have an intention for it. Just take a few moments maybe before Laura takes over and get an intention going. Do you want to use it for healing, for creating, for you know anything purpose related? And, and then afterwards, we're just going to talk about it and we all have an opportunity then to just check on how you guys are doing and what's going on with you. And we're just going to take it, no plan, no plan, plan after the meditation. So Laura, over to you from here. Okay, I'll probably um, turn my video off in a minute because if my lens falls out, um, I don't want to disturb people because I'm holding my glasses together at the moment, but that's fine. What um, When I did this fetus in the womb, um, I did it as a teaching meditation because most of these meditations sort of come as teaching, um, especially for most of us who've been um, looking and reading Andrew's material. What occurred to me is this could be very, very long. And I've now trimmed it back to about 20 minutes. Because if you think about it, if you're going to your fetus in the womb blueprint, you've got everything that was, is, and will be. And you've got so many potentialities in all of that. We could almost look at anything from being our fetus in the womb, because that's where it all began. So if I've missed things out and, you know, you can always write your own later. Um, and certainly this will be available on the Earth Nouveau Hub um, website or our, um, yeah, our website probably or the Facebook page later if you want it. But, uh, you know, I've tried to cover as much as possible, but let's, let's, just, let's just really go there and see ourselves now um, in our mother's womb as that little curled up fetus. And I shall now go into the meditation and turn my video off. So we'll just get relaxed, get yourself in a nice, comfortable receiving mode. Okay, fetus in the womb, teaching meditation. Since the dawn of our first birth, of all our eternal births, we have summoned that force within to give us manifestation. We've called forth our greatest interconnectivity to all that is, was, and will be as the divine fetus and combined our will and fortitude to take that sacred journey from the void, from the nurturing womb, through the forced amnesia of the birth canal into the world of shape and form where our spirit becomes body and can sing the song of earth. From the very depth of our being now, our innermost self, we sit in the blissful silence of this now moment. We can reconnect, we can call upon that innermost cosmic expression once again, that point in space-time where we were cradled in our mother's pelvic bowl, as our own fetus in our mother's womb. This is not a place of unknowingness for us. Here is where the completeness of ourselves exists in our full attunement to all past, present and future selves. So take yourself there now to rediscover that zero point by focusing your attention to yourself as that fetus at that epicenter of your dream world, 
your very own dream stream. Here we are bathed in our mother's amniotic fluid, those waters which were our very own oceans of awareness and seas of consciousness. Can you expand your aura now in this present moment and open yourself to these frequencies so you can have greater cognizance of the seen and unseen, taking in the essence of all that is, was and will be. Take yourself there. Surround yourself with those waters. See yourself. The divine bundle of creative spirit. Within this tiny curled ball beats your heart, the very first part of you that formed. This is your celestial inheritance. Feel it within your own body now, still drumming your own heartbeat. This heart has been with you always. Bring your awareness to your heart of the now and overlay it in your vision of your fetus heart. It's still the same heart. We're reassembling our infinite energies on the beginnings of a journey to the finite and back to infinity again. Say out loud, I revoke all times I was afraid of living in my heart and terrified of being alone. I revoke all lifetimes where I was deserted, abandoned, left and ignored, for I found the internal fortitude to be born, that will to live. I revoke the imprinting of fraud time, that I am finite. Now recognize that you hold the frequency of love in your heart and return yourself to that place now and feel the warmth, comfort and reassurance of that place. The place that holds the greatest connection to your source, to the divine. Recognize your pericardium holds your heart and your fetus heart. It's what protects your heart from damage in time. It stores our oldest and most programmable waters and the waters of your mother's womb holds you as the fetus. You can speak to these waters, words of wisdom and beauty. Say, I love myself enough to show up for myself, to benefit my soul's level by this acknowledgement of my most ancient waters. So love yourself enough to manifest your sovereignty from this Peter's heart, knowing that your heart is your place of resource and love. When you sit in the seat of your heart as your I am presence, you are strong and in full control of your body, your DNA skin suit of experience as you walk this earth. Say out loud, I have free will choice where I place myself and I choose now to operate from my heart. I am an aware, authentic being, able to process my own soul's journey through my heart. And I do not require anyone's permission, approval, direction to be in my heart, for it is my sovereign choice at all times. No other being can touch me when I'm in my heart space or instill fear in me, for it is where I create my own sacred frequency of life force. As a fetus, we have the infinite set of memories and potentials in the blueprint we have created. From this place of fetus connectivity, we can make a choice to audit all of our belief systems from the moment of inception. We can create a permanent spiritual court of equity and go through the deep ancestral process of auditing what are our memories and what are the memories of others. <clears throat> What are the belief systems that are impressed upon us by our parents and our family lineage or technology that is manipulating our reality? We can affirm we only source memories in earth time as this I am presence. By returning to the fetus now, we can also create spiritual courts of equity to help us with hijacked energy exchanges. Say out loud. To all those who have targeted me as watchers and predictors of my future potentials as the blueprint of the fetus in the womb, 
in this time stream and matrix, I put you now on permanent spiritual notice. If your energy violates my I am presence in this matrix or any other matrix network, you will be placed in the spiritual court of equity outside of this universe so you may find remedy and resolve without using and abusing my signature frequency for perverted forms of justice. I imprint these words now into the very water surrounding my fetus. So all watchers and predictors are now put on notice. I am in complete and total sovereignty of this I am presence now in my heart. I am the fullness of who I am. I make myself impervious to your systems of domination and control. Look again at yourself as the fetus, waiting for the force within to take full flight. Peel away the layers of conditioning and programming you've taken on in this and other lifetimes to see the beauty and exquisiteness of a place from where all was held in potential for you. And by your focus now, still is, where your plan, your blueprint was waiting for its opportunity to come into full blossom. So much peace resides in this sacred space that transcends all time. All your potential dreams before you relinquish to a power you thought greater than yourself and you accepted the rules of Roman numeral time. Focus on your tongue. It was the second organ to be formed. So as the fetus, raise your heart voice, your mind, heart tongue connection to the great sky nations and to the great beyond. Lift your head, not in pride, but in full divine presence. Let the ancientness of your core reverberate through all time, space and no time, through all voids and timelines, calling out to each and every part and piece of you, each and every forgotten self lost in other variations of time and no time, where the rug of natural earth time was pulled out from under your ancient future feet. Call all of you home now so that this vibrant, non-broken, multi-dimensional power base of atonic radiant light has access to the fullness of yourself. All lost and hidden news now reunited from behind all veils of misconceptions of time. This ancient being that is you as the now being and you as the fetus calls them all home now to this being of the now claiming your rights as a natural being born to Earth Mother. Call them to share your sacred fire with all peacemaker and peacekeeper versions of yourself and to share with you your forgotten stories so you may fill in the gaps created by race amnesia and misuse of time and learn your true heritage. Following your tongue came your spinal column. And with this is a little slice of brain appeared on the heart. And the brain and heart separated as the spinal column grew until you're fully formed. The button is the little slice of original brain on the surface of the heart adjacent to the thymus and acts as a mechanism for healing. The thymus or high heart. Its only purpose is when you are going through teenage growth years and it has an intense chemical release. So the fullness of the rest of your I am spiritual processes come in. Then the thymus begins to shrink and become part of your lymph process of moving fluids between the brain, the neck and the heart. So it's a channel. You can incorporate the thymus going back to teenage years by focusing on it and saying, I go back to the time of my growth spurts and demand the return of the rest of my growth energy. Go now to the very edge of where your meridians exist, to your fingernails and toenails of this little fetus that is you. And as an iron being now, bring intense focus to them. This focus creates a pulsing action over a period of time where the nails are growing in the cuticle and toenails and fingernails represent a frequency of growth time. 
So in this little heart feeder space meditation, now bring all your liquid life process to the tips of your fingers and deposit large volumes of heart-based awareness to the fingertips and toes. So heart energy is a much greater aspect of your meridians and central nervous system. This process expands the I am heart, so it is felt on the very edges of your existence. Send love to your fingernails and toes in that fetus imagery. It's from this sacred space, deep within our fetus heart connection, that we now connect to our seven past generations, those in the Aurora Borealis. The North is the home of our ancestors. As your I am, now go find your astral city. The colors will call you. It will be the colors of your soul family. Here you can plan the types of soul family you want to work with before going to the South Pole. In awareness or unawareness, we're all interacting with this life force of the Aurora Borealis through our Schumann resonance with the magnetic effect. Just stay in that meditative moment. And marvel at the flowing stream. Is that, can I carry on, Martina? Uh, you can. We've lost uh, a little bit, maybe a half a minute, 30 seconds. What was that then? I don't know. We've lost your... your you lost my for Okay, I'll go back. Just go back a paragraph or so. Sorry. In awareness or unawareness, yep. we're interacting with this life force of the Aurora Borealis through our Schumann resonance with the magnetic effects of the coronal injections and solar winds that create this electromagnetic frequency. Reimprint now in your fetus DNA skin suit that reconnection as you bathe in the swirling solar winds and marvel at the flowing streams of colours. The greens, the pinks and violets and many other colours, those dream streams of Earth's dreaming mind. Sit by the fires of creation with your elders and say to your fetus in the womb, blueprint, I open myself to the natural flow of my ancestors' wisdom and experiences and transmute negative ancestral patterns. I do not have to inherit the disasters, mistakes or debts of my ancestors from another reality. The Aurora Borealis affects our sexuality, sensuality and copulation. Anything that's a part of our daily background energy resource. Ask your seven past generations to bring those areas into balance for you. For the potential is there for those energies to be in your sexual centers leading to a Kundalini awakening. Say now to the system of domination and control, I delete and reject all the algorithmic shifts in the electromagnetic energy that you've perverted, misused and polluted out of its natural form of Earth's mother's natural life force energy. I reject all the perverted energy flows that affects the natural energy flows of my chakras. Tell your fetus how it begins with our own heart self and how we hold that mantle of responsibility to pass the great teachings on to our children and grandchildren, how we stand lovingly on the shoulders of our ancestors. Tell your story to your fetus. Tell the stories of the great well nation who sing their songs to soothe earth waters and connect to our hearts, to honor our ancestors, be it the trees of the standing nation, and the Sky Nation and the Seven Directions or our DNA and soul family lineage, all those of the very land we live on, for all are our ancestors. Ask the ancestors to help you expand your vision, reclaim your inner timeless being, craft your soul's purpose, embody the life you planned to live eons ago, forging an alignment with Source, 
to align you to your true north, to bring you back home to you. Reach out with prayers of gratitude in this direction for all of great mystery and great spirit's beautiful gifts. Can you now, as you connect to the North Pole or Aurora Borealis, feel how much inner wisdom has been absorbed and integrated, how its fluidity is pulled through time and no time, like a thread that weaves the very fabric of your being. In the South Pole, Aurora Australis, we're now connecting with the cradle board of the seven future generations, those on the positive timeline and expression, as a way to bring a density of light manifestation to that I am who's going to pass on the torch of I am to the next I am, the next fetus. You are here to shape your legacy. Here are a different set of astral cities from the North Pole. Be in your own center and recognize the inherent value in this meditation to connect your fetus. For here our memories in light are all accessible to us. And here is where we carry our infinite blueprint of potentialities. Our life force vibrant with creation and potential of expression of our original source spark. Here in blue road time, we call in the creative force to come into the fetus frequency, signaling to Earth Mother we want to enter the Earth incarnation grid. Allow those streams to run through you once again and consider your future generations, for we are ancestors of ourselves through DNA and soul lineage. Ask yourself what you want to leave as a legacy to the future generations of yourself. What skill sets can you craft and hone now that will add to the greater being that is you? What programs can you outcreate now so that your future selves won't have to wade through the dross and baggage of unhealed traumas you neglected this lifetime? Here is where you can empower your future by sacredly infusing into your future incarnations your I am presence now and imprinting protection co-creation and unconditional love for the seven future generations, doing your great work in the now, so future youths can live to their fullness of expression. You are a sacred celestial divine feminine and masculine on your journey to the stars. Claim your legacy as a galactic and universal citizen outcreating the systems of oppression and regression and servitude without end. Here in this fetus meditation, we claim our birthright that is this journey that we planned from our first eternal birth as a source spark to do our great work in equal co-creation, non-competition, non-hierarchical order with Earth Mother. Lifetime after lifetime, we've gained wisdom and knowingness Memories carried in our DNA, carried in our very blood, and in this eternal moment of now, engage your multidimensional hindsight and foresight to bring forth all the learning and wisdom from all past, present and future selves and declare yourself a hub of interconnectivity between all that is, was and will be. The ancestors are us and our offspring of this lifetime and other lifetimes who are tuning in non-competition, equal co-creation to add to the greater frequency of humanity's awakening, humanity's transcending and humanity's understanding. Use this meditation to awake fully and purposely to your sovereignty at the fetus level and choose and claim the scale and size at which you do your great work. So you may dream the great dream of peace. Aho. 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 Aho.
Is everyone back? Nope. <laughs> That, that was that was great, Laura. That's a jam, jam packed. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it was jam packed, absolutely. Really powerful, Laura. Good. Well, there it's Andrew's teachings in there, is what it is, isn't it? Just combined into a fetus meditation. Yeah, but the way you did it, it, it was really... Beautifully put together, yes. Yeah, beautifully put together. Thank you. you. You covered every aspect, really. It certainly makes you think, doesn't it? Yes, I mean, I was going to go off and do a astral visits, but that would take a whole... If we visit our astral cities, that's a whole nother meditation we'd have to do for those. Because you also yeah. have go with a certain amount of fortification don't you yes, to, yes. to your cities so we mm -hmm. couldn't get any more in depth than that but I think it covered the basics of what Andrew was telling us last week as well yeah yes so how was it for you guys does anyone want to say something did it bring some stuff up did some healing get activated or or any thoughts that got activated Hi guys. Hi Martin. Hi, hi hi Laura. Thank you. It was wonderful. Um, I just wanted to add something. Uh, obviously, we know there are no coincidences. Um, and I have this medicine card book, and um, I drew a card, and the card was the bat. And I just wanted to read you just just a few words, not all of it. It says, "Sacred bat, flew to me." From the darkness of the cave, womb-like reaction, reflections, answers it gave, birth, death, rebirth, cycles of the whole never ending, just eclipse, the journey of the soul. So it, it really is what we are doing today. And, uh, you know, it, it explains what it is, but it's about, they talk about the shaman's death, the death of, they did some rituals, and uh, they bur buried him in like a, like a grave, but they just put um, a, a, a something on top, blanket on top of it. And so he had to stay there for the night and face all the fears, just like Laura was taking us through it. And it's the rebirth. Mm -hmm. So it's about, um, it's about, um, to face everything and to really go and get down, double down, like Andrew would say, uh, to the bone marrow and the heart and the sanctuary of the soul. Because from that moment, when we come through that, that's when we rebirth. You know, I'm talking about myself because I'm going through things and I'm doing the exercises. And it's like everything is just coming out and creating this sanctuary where you feel like you're safe, where I feel like safe, peace, uh, and love, and all, all that. So yeah. thank you, Laura, for this. I have written some things about it, but I don't want to go into that. But I just thought that was interesting, this bat. I just threw the card, and it just came up. So I thought, wow, it can't be, can be a coincidence. <laughs> You That's a nice, a nice synchronicity. Yes, absolutely. And I like what you said there. It's really that safe space, you know, if you, I mean, look, we've all been there. Yeah, we've all been in the fetus of the mother's womb, not that we can remember. But it's that safe space, that warm feeling of the placenta around you and you, you know, you being in there. And, and the interesting thing is, obviously, you know, there's, mo there's the first imprinting that's actually happening in the fetus and you start you know learning this reality through the eyes of of your parents of your mom of your dad you know what what they watching on tv at times you know it's, it's really interesting how that conditioning that imprinting starts from there and this is you know that meditation you can keep using to go back and and clear out change change all of these things you know Beautiful. 
Anyone else who wants to say something on this? What, what came up or what comes up when you think of that fetus in the womb process? The word sacredness, Martina, came up for me and it's interesting that, that Andrea brought it up as well. Sacredness and potential, the potentiality of the fetus, because really in the sacredness of that space, everything is possible. So it, it's that possibility and it's that, that, that we had once and that we have kind of, that has been, I suppose, doctored out of us a bit to some extent and the way that we can reconnect to it. And it's only since Andrew started doing the teachings on the fetus in the mother's womb that I even realized you had that potential of going back to that place and reconnecting to that potentiality. It's not lost at all. It's there for us to reconnect to it. Yeah, it's that rebirthing. I mean, there, there's lots out there in terms of rebirthing, you know, um, rebirthing uh, therapies and, and things like that. Mm. Um, and even in a timeline therapy, Gestalt and everything, they, they actually go all the way into the fetus to start working on the conditioning. Um, mm. But it's nice to actually being able to do it for yourself. And then another way of, of you know, if you just want to obviously use that as a basic, because that takes out a lot of the conditioning already just by acknowledging that these are the possibilities. But it's also, you know, what he, I think what he's been saying of, you know, finding yourself those pictures mm. of, you know, your younger selves going back is where, wherever you want to go. And then actually looking at the pictures to have something outside of yourself and then start integrating that. Mm. And then really working with your younger self, with your child, with your fetus and, and bring it up through the years where you're now and take that healing that you've got in that womb and then just allow it to to grow up with you to really integrate it into the physicality mm. amy has her hand up amy has her hand up please yeah. amy i'm gonna need to get used to that yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. um for me uh oh powerful i always get choked up when I go back to my the fetus in the womb. Um, but especially Laura, when you talked about the amniotic fluid, I think that was in the beginning. Whoa, that was for some reason that going back to feeling my own amniotic fluid, I actually came, I actually took my fluid and I came out of my mom in a bubble of fluid and I went to multiple realities kind of like in a little ship and which I kind of feel it's hard for me to go there. So I was actually able to go there right. and feel those multiple realities, um, just stars, that's all kind of I saw. But um, then I connected with the thymus. And you said teenage years, I, I saw a lot of um, feelings come up about that teenage years. And then what you said about powerful, oh, it's almost as if I could, how people take the power, we think they take the power from us, so we are taught that we have no power. I actually felt, still in my fluid, that power, so. Thank you. you yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Caroline, yeah. Caroline is saying, just had a mini synchronicity, right? When Laura said, no, being can touch you. And then the cat put her paw or his paw on, on her stomach. <laughs> the cat's like, fuck you, I'm a being. Here you go. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> meow, yes, meow, meow. Good. Anyone else? This is now the time where, you know, we're just going to talk about what came up for you, how you can use this, what else has been coming up for you in the last couple of days. We haven't had an opportunity over the last couple of uh, Zooms where we were just talking a little bit about ourselves and just throwing some stuff out. Any questions, obviously around the topic, 
type thing, but it's quite a big topic anyway. Anything you want to contribute? Um, I, I have a question. Um, so I was so excited to hear that you're doing this meditation today because I've been um, in the process of uh, doing a lot of ceremonies to incarnate my own child uh, that wants to come in. And so I was wondering how, or, or if you could speak a little bit more about bringing in the future ancestors, um, bringing in like the future generations and how you can work with your womb space um, and the future fetuses that will be inside your own womb space to kind of bring them in, in beauty and in ease and to really help um, their souls come in with like consciousness. And I wondered if um, there was anything else that you could share on that. Okay, Laura, do you wanna do you wanna kick that off? Yeah, that is a really interesting question, Lily. And I'd say, especially if you do ceremony, do do that with some ceremony, but involve the South Pole. So okay. we talk about, as you probably know, the cradle board of the seven future generations. So it's working with the South Pole. And if you could, I don't know how much sort of. Um, protection or fortification of yourself you do but to, but within ceremony you're going to get some pr protection anyway um, to do it within ceremony and do a sort of a journey where you can visit the astral city of the south pole find your astral city in the south pole to find your future incarnations and talk to your guides and so on there so you can plan the future fetuses that come in and that, that is just really in a nutshell. Um, there's probably quite a lot we can add to it. I've not really explored the South Pole. We've always talked about the North Pole or Borealis, haven't we? We focus so much on our seven past generations, it seems, and the ancestors. And I do, I'm, I'm an ancestral medium, so I tend to, to, I've always focused on that and done not done a lot of work towards the cradle board um, work but that will be something that will be really beneficial, I would have thought. Who else has got something on that? So, so Lily, are you saying that you're having a, uh, some, uh, you're having a, uh, you're planning to have a baby? Um, yeah, so the soul of my next baby came down uh, maybe six months ago. So I've been working with her soul um, to uh, basically work on the things that I need to heal before she incarnates and uh, prepare my body and to basically she's helping me to release traumas from my last childbirth experience that I don't need to hold for the, my future one and um and and to kind of um uh assist me in knowing how the 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 best way I can be her mum in order for her to fulfill her karmic path in the lifetime that she's chosen to have so it's been really exciting um, and uh, it's been uh, really transformational. So um, since kind of finding Andrew's work um, as well a couple of months ago, because I, I did a ceremony to, to kind of ask for my human teachers on earth to come forward. And that's when I came across him and then um, I found this group and I was really excited. So um, yeah, kind of, yeah, we're working. so yeah, that's what I've been working with. <laughs> so no, I, I think that's amazing that you already have that awareness of the soul that wants to come in. I mean, that that's already puts you into a, into a space where lots of other people or other women probably wouldn't have been. Um, I think it's two different things here. When you, as you're already working with with the fetus, with the new soul, um, you already know what you're doing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think and. I think that that level of awareness is is just allowing the feet, the soul, yeah, that's coming in to really plan her fetus, her her life in a much better way. I don't necessarily, mm. for me personally, I don't necessarily think that you need to get involved in that at this stage. Other than, yeah. just, hey, cool, I'm excited. <laughs> when you're coming in, that's when your work in particular starts, you know? Yeah. You've already started all the cleansing and the clearing and all of that. And then, of course, yeah. when, when she or he comes in, that's when it really gets for you to obviously be the healthiest, you know, version that you can mm. be. And 
also have the awareness that the first imprinting, you know, as the, the baby comes into the womb, then the fetus comes in and starts. Because when the fetus is in the womb, uh, he or she still has the connection to the teachers that are in manifestation, like you and, and mm. everything around you. So it's also your family that is already starting, you know, your mom, your dad, your grandparents, you know, and the people that you're mixing with will also imprint already into that fetus. So I think mm. the responsibility then probably comes in who you are actually, actually mixing with, you know, and knowing when to get yourself out, knowing that, you know, it would impact on the baby, you know? Yeah. Um, but other than that, I don't, I don't think as far as I'm concerned with that, it's, it's, it's just absolutely fantastic that, you know, and that you can already <laughs> work. I would never do it. Joy. Yeah, love. sure. Joy, love. You can already teach her, him love. I think that's the biggest yeah. one. That starts with a connection with your partner and the people around you. Now, Thank going, you. Like, like Laura said, you know, going into the future, it's probably not even something that you need to do now, you know, with having it, obviously some, a baby, a new soul coming in, that's exciting enough. But that being, you know, being in, in the Aurora uh, Oralis, you know, going into your future thing, um, that's very much, have you done, I think you mentioned that the other day, the soul, uh, the sanctuary of the souls. It's very much having, it's in his, um, the mystical thing, living the mystical life daily. Mm -hmm. But basically it's just a visualization where you going to the Aurora Oralis and you just, um, in this visualization process, you allow yourself to arrive there and you allow yourself to meet other fetuses and you you start connecting to them and you start breaking bread with them and having some fun and you know and all of that and then there is apparently a possibility where you can start planning the next fetus for your next generation mm. just like what your baby is doing now mm. your babies oh yeah the, the soul is right there doing exactly that so what you could do is you could, in your visualization process, go into the Aurora Oralis um, and see if you can meet him or her there and have a chat, you know, just that. But I, I just really, uh, in, in a very joyful, loving, and not really forcing yourself, I have to do anything right or wrong. Sure. I think you're already on, on a great level. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Very exciting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great question. So, so Lily, Lily, do you, are you pregnant now? No. <laughs> no, you're just calling in. Yeah, well, um, she told me she'd come down. I didn't have much choice. Just like my last baby, he was like, yeah, I'm um, here. <laughs> yeah, I had the same on my ones. They always visited before they came. Yeah. So <laughs> what, one of the things that Andrew talks about is, um, is the sexual process leading up to uh, a yeah. conception. That there's, uh, we'll have to try and see if we can find it for you. But he, he spoke about um, the idea of the actual, um, the actual sexual process should be drawn out. So there's a, a long period of sensuality between the mother and the father um, for the purpose of bringing in the soul. And even that can mm. be sexual, but to the point where um, orgasm isn't achieved. And so these yeah. energies build and they build and they build until the point where you're ready to call in the soul. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. amazing. I would love a link to that if um, if he speaks about that somewhere. But I mean, to say with my with my last child that when we conceived him, it was the most incredible experience Like I saw a ball of light enter my womb. Yeah. And my husband said he'd never experienced a feeling like he felt it felt like um, like a soul, like literally passed through him into mm. me. Um, so that it was like a, it was it was kind of going into like a different dimension. It was um, really profound, and I, I mean, we knew instantly within um, two seconds that I'd conceived. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, it, and we did a ceremony uh, leading up to it where we, we we did a medicine walk out on Dartmoor where we live, and mm -hmm. um, called in the soul, um, and then and then came back after the medicine walk and and conceived. Um, but I would love to learn more about that because we kind of did it intuitively um 
so it'd be lovely to sort of hear some more teachings about it and other people's experiences sounds like you've got it perfect and and the other thing is like everything that martina said absolutely spot on just then but but also to remember that where it comes to the fetus you can have many different souls that come in and out of your fetus before it's born even as a baby uh -huh. the souls can change until the i am solidifies uh -huh. and so where it comes to what you can do for the baby your responsibility is really only your own self-healing and self-nurturing it's the best uh -huh. thing that you can do you know yeah. and not to put the baby's journey above your own right yeah not not okay. to give that that martyrship journey early too early on remember that your journey runs concurrent and that your journey yeah, okay. is the most important thing to you okay yeah that's thank you thank you that's really good advice can i share something so just uh really interested in you saying that different souls come into the fetus and the baby because i had a really um powerful experience um a couple of months ago where i woke up in the night after um it, I mean it was a dream but it wasn't a dream and I saw two light beings with their hands in my womb um, sort of tinkering away almost and I was watching uh, like observing they were saying this they were kind of I, I assumed they were changing the karmic path and they were saying this will teach her to be human or something like that this will teach her more to be human and they were kind of it looked as though they were ch they were ch they were changing something um, with the fetus the, the the baby that has come down um so i don't know that just linked then it was quite a powerful experience yeah leave, leave that one to great mystery okay <laughs> let that one unravel on its own okay <laughs> you've got a special soul coming in mm. Mm. <laughs> good luck with her mm. <laughs> thank you <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Wow, that's very good. Very cool. Anyone else? Oh, this is for me. I want to say thank you to Laura. <laughs> and definitely I have to listen to this again, maybe three times, because I know I have to work a lot for my fetus because uh, my mother pregnancy with me was a drama. And uh, I think uh, the last one that uh, Mary did, I just fell in a deep sleeping stage. I couldn't get out of the chair for two hours. And I know that I had to go deeper in that one. Maybe I'll do a fire ceremony or something and then go back and read this and, and do a couple of times to be able to overcome because I know that I have to do a lot of work. I had doing a lot of work, but I still have to do more. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Aminia. Thank you. And, and yes, you're absolutely right. I think, and uh, Laura, you just, do you want to say, sorry, you just unmuted. Do you want to say something to Herminia? I wasn't. Um, thanks, Herminia, for what you said. And yeah, I'm not surprised it, it is something because so much of the language in there, as you'll recognize, is Andrew's because there's no getting away from using his word orders and the way he expresses things because we all know his language carries the right light code of information that we need to get the, the energy message and the energy exchange across. So I do have to use, I've, I've, I've put at the end, it's from his teachings that I've put it together. So we already know we're working with some very high frequency material. So it's something that, yes, you want to read and reread. And I got quite tired doing it. You do when you're working with high frequency words. That's, you know, it takes, and, and I was discussing with Sean earlier, it's actually doing something like that is a great way of learning as anybody who's done transcribing knows. So transcribing is one thing. So you, you're learning, you're listening, and then you're writing it down. But actually putting, some, putting a teaching or a meditation together is another form of, of, of learning. So I would always say also, Hermina, add stuff to it for yourself. Because as we said, the, the fetus in the womb blueprint is also very personal to us. So we yeah. can go back and add some things in there that we would like, like Lily can now mm -hmm. with, with um, you know, what's happening for her. We can make these things very personal. It, it is by no means sort of an end in itself. That's it. That's just, that's just the beginning. There's so much potential yeah. there. Yeah. Is, is it one layer at a time, like they say? <laughs> 
Take off one layer or off uh, at a time. This um, because I have working a lot with that, and I know it's like ancestor uh the same patterns of behavior from my family from my mother's side especially it's so much drama that and uh mari have helping me a lot i did my own invocation and and uh the soup invocation and i'm working in that i did a ceremony fire ceremony two weeks ago and i'm going to do another one with this one because definitely i want to get out of this cycle definitely thank you so much yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Martina, Alan said something interesting in the chat just now. Did you see it? Uh, He's lucky ladies. Men have to use a lot more of their imagination. Tell us about that, Alan. <laughs> um, well, it is true. I, 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 we don't have the womb, but we have that creativity. Um, Lori, I think you did a fabulous job. That was a fabulous compilation of all of Andrew's material. And I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, there was something that I just wanted to add in terms of the sanctuary of all souls. And it was something that Martina had picked up earlier. But when you're in that, um, what is it? The, uh, the prayer ground for the regeneration of interconnectivity. It enables me to go to a point of space time even before the creation of the fetus, even before the separations of the cells. It's like, because you are giving yourself prayers, you're giving prayers to yourself as the fetus. So you can actually visualize a stream of dreaming light coming down, emanating down and into that cellular structure. So for me, who doesn't have a wound that's looking for imagery, that one really helped in terms of that creation of that space time where I could see myself and visualize it before the actual separation of the cells. Again, part of Andrew's teachings. Yeah, for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's the sanctuary of all souls you're talking about, isn't it? Right. Alan, the last place you go. Yeah, yeah, it's well, well worth reading um, in his Living the Mystical Life um, daily series. I think that's wrong. Or I think it might be separate to that. I think it might be available separately. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm, I'm sure it's read yeah. out somewhere or we can, you know, Lily, if, if you needed some, you know, just contact us on the yeah. uh, Earth Nouveau and, and we send it to you. But that's a nice format and then you can, ex, you know, work with that. Now, with the fetus in the womb, uh, healing as such, I, I personally don't go beyond the fetus. When I do the healing, of the fetus in the womb, I don't go beyond that. Like when I was in in the in the uh, in the South Pole and I was choosing and everything, you know, I don't get involved in that because for me that's the sacred bit which I have done at the time. For me, it's more like when I'm in the womb already and when I'm starting to take on the imprinting from everything, you know. This is actually more like, uh, and also because I'm a bit nosy, so I'm going to go in there and say, so what are the karmic resolutions that you've actually come in with, you know? Um, so it's, it's more like a, a curiosity. It's more like a wondering. It's that connecting with the fetus, not going before that. But that's just for me. Um, and, and the other thing is with, because we're mentioning the, the regeneration chamber in the sanctuary of the souls, when I go there, I go and meet a, a, a healer version of myself that actually runs that regeneration center. It's in, uh, it's, it's, a, it's the crystal caves in Machu Picchu. That's where I go because I used to be a crystal healer there. So it's you get a double whammy, you know, because you, you're going there and you're meeting, you know, an ancestor of yourself, you're connecting and it feels really, um, yeah, a big connection because you're going to your past self to get a healing for the now present self. But anyway, that's just, uh, I wanted to throw in. Well, it also seems to me that most of the planning and the work is done with um, in the astral cities in the North Pole, in the Aurora Borealis there, isn't it? That's really where you're planning, um, sort of thinking from Lily's point of view as well. 
So maybe that's why by the time you then move, the fetus has moved down to the, the South Pole or the soul's moved down to the South Pole, that is really to signal to Earth Mother that you're ready to come in, isn't it? And to set it all up. But you've already made those decisions with your guides in the North Pole about your soul family and so on, haven't you? Where you're going to come in. That's my understanding of what Andrew was saying last week. Yeah, I, I got that too. Did you guys mm. get that too? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just say when Alan was speaking, I started to get um, a kind of a vision when he was talking about the soul coming in and coming down. And I started to get a vision and I didn't have this before, but it, it's, it's nothing spectacular. It's just on the physical that the sperm, while the soul is coming in from one direction, the sperm is coming from another and it is also traveling up through the womb, through the fallopian tube, where it's going to meet with the ovum and where it's going to explode. And, and that's the connection that actually makes the soul enter into that space and develop into the womb. And then it, it grows there and there's another meeting of the male and the female when it is born and it comes and it is given birth. It, it was just something that that came to me as Alan was speaking about the journey of the of the soul coming down, and how the two unite and what happens. Okay. Increasing yeah. the image, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. 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 Did anyone yawn whilst Laura was doing the? No. Were you, Martin? I couldn't see. Sometimes I did you a little bit, yeah. And certain <laughs> places, I was like, Wah! <laughs> it was nice, you know, the balancing out of the energies. I always know there's something going on. I'm not sure who, 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 what it is exactly, but yeah. Big body yawn. Yes. <laughs> cool. Hey, Laura, will you um share that? Will you share your um the writing of that so we can record it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then yeah. I'll put it on um, Earth Nouveau. I expect that's the easiest way, isn't it? On our hub. Yeah. And then I was wondering if you would be willing to record it again. Um, Cause it kind of cut out. And then if you could do it a little slower, I know that's like asking a lot, but your voice, there's something about you embody this earth mother, you know, and I feel like I've had a really hard time. Andrew told me I needed to do a lot of the fetus and the womb work. And I was like, I don't fucking want to go back there. Like, no, like, I, and, like uh, that, um, and so there is something about, you just have a gentleness and a supportiveness. I was able to kind of sink into that. So obviously I'll do it in my own voice. There's a lot of healing there, but I think there's another layer of just, you know, the divine feminine and mother earth mother embodiment that really helped me sink into a different level so martina you were talking about yon and i cried and oh. it was a good it was just um Beautiful. yeah just a very sweet release um just able to create a really safe sacred space so thank you thank you a lot no yeah. wonderful it'll be a pleasure to do that for you i'll do a recording for you sarah and send it to you and um yeah we'll get this this put up and again, add to it as you want to, or change it as, as you want to for you. But I'm really pleased it helped you, even with tears. <laughs> well, that, that it's, it's so beautiful to have a physical connection with it, you know, tears, screaming, it doesn't really matter, whatever comes out, just it's that connection with the body that is so beautiful and really uh, healing, isn't it? And it also shows us that we're allowing the material to come in. We're allowing to absorb the energy and not just, you know, um, taking it in from a, in a, in a ego type intellectual, you know, level. Yes. I was thinking, you know, cause we've been doing these Earth Nouveau's now for nearly a year and we hadn't actually thought, I don't think we've done anything to do with the fetus in the womb work at all. Have we? No, it just came up uh, last week because we talked yeah. about the, the both uh, about the Oralis uh, Aurora. So, um, Lily, the question: Yes, we have a website, um, the earthnovo.com, and then Lily, you can also have you joined our public page already? 
Yeah, I think I invited you, didn't I, Lily, to our Earth Nouveau Facebook page. Because all yes, our... Yes, you did. Sorry, our... um, the internet cut out, um, so I couldn't hear you. I just heard the last little bit. <laughs> all our replays, the audio. <laughs> No, actually not the audios now the beginning was audios but now we're just making a link to the youtube so it's all on youtube and it's all on um on that website so you can download it from there and then we also put the the meditations and the revocations whatever people come up with i've just put on or it will come on andrea's um food revocations going on we had caroline's uh, uh color revocation on and you know whatever else i can't even remember so there's a lot of material up there um, to 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 revisit and then obviously make your own out of it if you want to absolutely yeah so fetus in the womb i'd like to add something martina please do um like what sarah was saying there about the fact that she's been um asked to do more fetus in the womb work for me, I found that, because I don't know if you remember, guys, but when we did that meditation the other day, um, when Mary was talking about Bridget, um, the first thing I do is put people into the fetus in the womb and then bring in those other connections. And for me, the fetus in the womb connection is something that it's so expansive, you can explore it for many, many lifetimes. But one thing that I like to do is I put myself into, as the fetus into the womb in my prayer process. Um, you know, just just to connect to that energy and connect to that frequency without any expectations, really, other than just using that imagery and that connection to make a moment even more sacred, you know, and I think, Sarah, you might want to experiment with that first, just 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 go into that space without any particular agenda. Is it you mean Lily or do you mean uh, Lily? Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. My, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thought of going back to my mother's womb, it just it's like going into a battlefield or going, it's just yeah. this like icky, slick, monstery, dark, you know, and it's just like, ugh, there's nothing about me that I've tried so hard to separate from all that that is that to kind of go back and then embody this vulnerability. And it's it's just been well, really you've got to put your big girl panties on sarah you've got to put your big girl panties on because you know if, you, if you're gonna if you're gonna um if you're gonna have like crying and things like that in the fetus in the womb process then you know the fetus is calling you you know part of our part of our responsibility is to learn to heal ourselves throughout time forwards and backwards it's important to our greater process i, th I, I think you should definitely go back there and Thanks for the tough love, Maddie. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, you don't have to go into your mum's fetus. You can go into your own. Sure. Yeah. It's like the, the guys to go, you know, into their own. You don't have to go into your mother's. You can actually, guys too, even though you don't have a fetus, you can go into your own. And to be honest, being a woman, I don't know if it makes it too much of a difference. Because no, if the universe don't necessarily visualize any fetus, uh, any any womb or anything. I'm just, you know, going with the energy. Just go with the energy, and if if it's really icky in in your mom, Sarah, then don't go there. You don't have to. Yeah, go in your own. Sort it out in your own. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's just the universe. Universe. a lot better. Yeah, the boundary. Just connect with the fetus itself. Yeah. No, absolutely. Send healing to that fetus. Even more powerful. You know, having the knowingness and the awareness that you can still heal yourself without having to go there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Not dependent on that. And then, of course, reminding yourself that you have chosen her in the first place. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's always a tricky one. Like, chosen her? Yes. <laughs> and maybe just that to have you now saying, okay, I will heal myself. I go there, but I actually don't need you. To do that so you see there's another energy in there yes it's almost like a standing up to her in in a in a loving way <laughs> i love that yeah cool and we can go to the universal womb can't we too exactly that's you see that's what people misunderstand is that the fetus in the womb process isn't just bound to this incarnation and it's not even just bound to our realm of course you know You've got the universal mm -hmm. fetus of creation and you've, you know, you've got the sun and all those other connections and earth mother herself. We can all be within her, within her womb, you know, 
there's many different layers that you can go to. And, and Sarah actually just said, I felt myself in my own womb and come to think of it, I've never gone into my mom's. Mm. I never thought about, it. I've never been in my mom's. I always go into mine for some reason. So <laughs> it works. I've, I've never actually gone into hers and I never thought about this. So it doesn't matter where you go, just go. <laughs> and on the, uh, also, I, 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 when I, I do go into my mother's room quite often, and I, I quite often give her healing because at the end of the day, it's also my fetus in that womb, you know? Yeah. If that works, absolutely. It all depends, you know, what works for you. Do you ever visualize the earth as your mom in those meditations? Yeah, why not? That's a expensive, expensive, or at least bring the earth in. You know, bring the heartbeat and connect to your heartbeat, you know. You bring your fetus into the earth mother in the visualization in your visualization process in the best way you can. It's extremely powerful. It's the next level to the fetus work. Mm. Alan's also put an interesting comment on there, Martina, if you want to read it. From a lucky guy who still has his mother and who lives with me. So having good relationship with one's mother is a foundational core healing for the fetus uh, mom meditation. It is, for mm -hmm. some, it is for some, and it's not necessarily required for others. Okay, it very much depends, very much depends. There's so many people who are born into, into families that have nothing to do with soul family. You know what I mean? And that, that's a big, big, I just wanna point that out on, on some level because lots of people think that just because they are family, they have to love each other and it has to work. It's fantastic that it works for you and it's, it's great. Um, but sometimes walking away is the love that is required for, for you know, yourself and for the parent. But, and, and when I say that, it's not, not walking away from a fuck you, I'm not gonna ever come back and that with the resistance behind it, but really acknowledging Thank you for giving life to me. That's what we contracted out. Now, is there any more karma that is required? Or, uh, I mean, is there any more karma that we need to resolve? Or are we done? Exactly. And if you have issues going into the fetus in the womb, then understand where that charge and polarity comes from. Is it from a place of neutrality or are there things that you don't want to look at? It's very important. Mm -hmm. And Marissa mm -hmm stuff sorry guys what did marissa you're gonna uh, rebirth marissa going in via an anthogen and went month by month through the imprints gave thanks to my mom for doing the biggest thing which was birthing me releasing imprints giving them back yep saying thanks to yeah absolutely thank you marissa and you know what guys just the acknowledgement that's, look we you can't do this wrong yeah, there's no right or wrong doing this. Just the fact that you're doing it, that just the fact that you're acknowledging that that is a possibility for your healing, yeah, without having to go into these huge rebirthing rituals that are out there. You know, there's so much polarity, charge and polarity attached to those. You can do this yourself. We, we are powerful creators, you know. We've, we've created to come here. We just forgot about it, you know. And this is all about reminding ourselves remembering all of that again that it's it's easy yeah almost for me this this meditation it's, it's not about rebirth as such but about the fact that you can go back to your blueprint and change things you can go back to your blueprint and make some of the amendments later you know so you, you're going back to that time where you were connected to to absolutely everything which is, you know, it's a great. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still are connected. We are still are in that ever present moment. Yeah. That, that's the thing. That's what, you know, it, it's not always just about the actual uh, being in the womb and the mother and child process. It goes way beyond that. This is, this is our actual way to be able to um, fine tune our own life plan and to make sure that we're on track. And we can do that then for many other lifetimes, backwards and forwards, once we become accustomed to the process of, you know, the fetus in the womb. Yeah. Thanks for that, Matt, Matty, because that's actually, you know, once we, once we manage to do this with ease, 
And there's a lot of potentiality in there that we can go and check out, you know, that curious wonderment. Okay, what else have I not considered yet? Especially for the peeps, you know, looking for, you know, purpose and mission and all of that. And then, of course, you know, once we've um, managed to, to do that, then we can use it to go and actually start planning now our future fetuses for the next seven plus generations, you know? This is what makes us multidimensional beings. This is what puts us into a place of choice. And there's so many teachings that come from this as well that we've barely touched on, which, is, you know, the blood teaching, isn't there? Imprinting of your blood and so on, that uh, we could maybe do another Zoom on at some point. But lots of teachings that this is a basis for. Yeah. So um, what... Since we're having this no plan, plan, little bit of fetus planning, creating, you know, type of stuff. Um, I don't know, but this probably is our like, I don't know, 50th show now or Zoom, probably, or 45th or something. I haven't really counted. But how are we doing so far? Let's let's do a little bit of, a, you know, how have you guys been enjoying it? What sort of... Um, ideas inspirations do you have that we could change that we could add that we could improve or if you just want to tell us that we are all amazing then that's okay too <laughs> we are all amazing everyone's amazing <laughs> i find it absolutely brilliant the fact that we're actually sharing now you see this was the one thing about being a student of andrews that i, I, I we never had was a place where we could come together in this format and just for the fact of being here and all these different people that come and go, it's just been the most incredible year. I've enjoyed it more than I've enjoyed anything in a very long time. Fantastic. It's, it's, been, it's been almost like a bit of an anchor, I think, for, for us, for the team, and hopefully for everyone to just really come together and, and especially with the lockdown now, right? Doesn't even, you know, having these anchors, and we haven't missed, we have not missed one show. You know, it's almost like something to look forward to, to do, and to do it together as a team, as a hub of interconnection. Mm -hmm. It's almost like an emanation of the teachings. And, yeah. and then, you know, we, we are stuck on 20 participants for some reason. 21. <laughs> we, what can we do? Um, to spread the word a bit more. I'm so clear on that, Margaret. Okay. <laughs> I take responsibility. I don't you clear you, I clear me. <laughs> so Andrea's going to clear all of that. So I'm expecting at least 200 next week. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks for that. But, you know, what else can we do? How can oh. we share it a bit? I I go on this, I mean, I'm going to send the link to a couple of my friends uh, to see if they can come in. And um, I really thank you because this is a nice feeling that you have the environment. It's like a brotherhood, sisterhood, and that, that you don't feel like a high hierarchy order or anything. That everybody bring the you know the little piece of pie to the table. It's a beautiful feeling. Oh, uh, you're sharing without thinking I'm doing the best or I have to do it. It's a beautiful feeling. And uh, thank you to everyone. <laughs> Thank you. That's why we, we created it. Is there a hand up? Do I see a hand with Amy? Apologize if I don't see those hands. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I love this. I love this. I love you guys. I just feel, huh, I don't know. I look forward to it. I make a promise every week. This is my promise to myself every week to come here. So if I'm not here, it's because of a reason. <laughs> I had to go somewhere else. But um, I love like something that Maddie said, I think you said too, I love the, I love words, like, and I get kind of hooked on words. Um, I don't know if that's a thing we can play with here, but like when Maddie said charge, and I don't know who you were talking to Maddie, but you said, is it charge and polarity or is it resistance when you're in your mother's womb? To me, that feels the same. So is there a 
Because if I have a charge, then I have a resistance. It's causing the resistance. So, so if you have resistance there, then is it based on charge and polarity or is it what other kind of programs could it be? It could be a whole number of different programs that are preventing you from going through that healing. Okay. Yeah. So it they're all- Part yeah. of you that's working against yourself. Right, no, I get that. I separated the, the, the two, you said charge and polarity or resistance. You separated them and I thought, well, that feels, those words feel the same to me. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. Charge and polarity is a, is a very good expression that really, it's an umbrella expression for negative emotions, if you want to call it that. Right. Mm -hmm. That takes you out of the neutral observer um, perspective, basically. And yeah. resistance too, right? Yeah. Resistance too. Okay. Resistance, just, resistance is a kind of resistance. Obviously, is resistance. So it's a you know it, it, it's a certain kind of frequency. But charge and polarity can be given even in a positive, even if you're looking at something too much. You know, even if you're putting too much credence on something, you're adding charge and polarity to it. So the charge, the charge is the energy you give into it, and the polarity is whether it's what end of the scale of experience it's on that you're attaching to or aver having aversion from. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's that makes sense. Okay. Yes, but thank you. So that's, that's I think we're led to believe charge and polarity is a negative thing, but actually there's times when charge and polarity are absolutely needed, aren't they, to bring you to a choice point or bring you to a decision. Positive forced evolution. Well <laughs> yeah. It depends how we look at it. I yeah. I, I look at it as Charge and polarity is, is, is anything, anything, good or bad, outside of neutral observation. And, and the good, the positivity, overly being positive, you know, is a judgment as well. It's almost like a judgment. Charge yeah. and polarity is a form of judgment. And it could be a good judgment that takes you into charge and polarity because it takes you out of the neutral observation it takes you into polarity it takes you into a duality and martyrship so, so for instance you know, and i use that i always use that you know it's like oh this is this is the guy i'm in love with this is the ta per personality this is this is the looks this is the you know i, I like a, a dark bearded guy that's it yeah now that's a positive if you wish but it's still a judgment which doesn't allow you to see the other possibilities. Now, you know, there might be a nice blondie, blue eyes, that is equally interesting. Yeah, that's charge and polarity, that's duality. But anything where there's a lot of charge attached and emotion attached. But I do think sometimes you need that charge and polarity. I'm sure there's times where I have needed that to actually shift a frequency. Well, it creates growth, doesn't it, Laura? I mean, if you're in a yes. room with somebody and somebody starts, you know, being obnoxious towards you, the first thing you think is, fuck them. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a judgment, but let's say that's a healthy judgment. You know, right, we need to get yeah. the hell out of here. It's, yeah. yeah. Lots of clarity there, but it actually helps you to reach another stage of growth. Exactly. Is yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I heard this world that is all Andrew, about. Andrew was saying recently that not all judgments are bad, and not all judgments, you know, that, that we do need, we, because actually we make judgments in our lives and making our decisions. You know, it's not as if they're mm -hmm. absent out of our lives. In making decisions, they are, there is a discernment going on, which basically, in the end, is a judgment. Yes, and you can also it's it's purely a definition thing. You yeah. Can, somebody to fuck off be angry yeah mm -hmm. and not go into charge and polarity look yes. at it all the time yeah because he doesn't attach it he takes he uses intensity because that is required in that moment mm -hmm. but the man yeah. doesn't go into charge and polarity because charge and polarity start getting into entanglement yes and yes and the, the charge is the chemical reaction that yes. That's so, what defines the charge as opposed to just saying fuck off and not having that chemical reaction. Yeah. But the old way of creating was the chemical reaction 
but it is harmful for us and for the body and it does entangle us. So the new thing is, yes, it's the renaissance of the new emotions, of the emotion. Yes. Any emotion you want to, but don't entangle with it. Don't go into charge and polarity. Can you be angry and tell somebody off with that intensity because you know this is your awareness and this is what creates the change right now? Mm. yeah and I you, love you that. can do that you actually can do that you can be angry and you can deal with your anger once you have got rid of the charge it's the charge that that tricks us and pulls us into that emotional state where we say things we don't mean and you know but when we actually can act, can manage the charge yes we can be angry and be very calm actually in it so charge has an agenda intensity doesn't Mm. charge has an agenda and intensity doesn't charge and polarity is just for me it's a lack of awareness when you still go into the chemical reaction the lack of awareness when you have awareness you you have it actually okay so there's another one to look at we often go into charge and polarity when we're actually not really choosing it it's like the internal programs the parasympathetic just kicks us right in and there's the reaction okay that's the charge polarity reaction when you come from a place of choice and from a place of awareness that this is required right now and then because it takes a lot of um knowing of yourself and awareness to to allow yourself to be intense and angry when it is required alfredo can you mute your mic please brother coming in i'm sorry dude (laughs) Not even so much about oh, what 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 yeah. it does to the it's not a kindness you know to obviously uh you know do this all the time without knowing what you're doing but if you if you know what you're doing and if you have an awareness and it is required because sometimes you know anger or that intensity i want to call it intensity but it could be anything else it could be uh, extreme sadness at the same time is required to create a change. It's a win-win situation, yeah? It's not that we are um, just throwing up on somebody. There's a difference between throwing up on somebody, you know, or using whatever emotion that is available to you to create a change. Exactly. I find myself, Martina, in many of my sessions that I do, um, becoming you know the 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 hard ass really telling people off and, and it's not come from a place of polarity it's because most of the light worker community at the moment are living in this everything's beautiful everything's wonderful i'm floating around on a bubble of light you know and and, and i find quite often that's when you use that kind of intensity for a positive thing it's like pers- bursting a bubble bursting illusion absolutely matty and then you know i'd also ask you what awareness do you actually have when you get into that when you step into that space almost nothing it just happens yeah but acknowledge the awareness because very often when that happens what do you actually do you're talking to that person plus the entourage of that person yes it's very often anger when you start using anger as an intensity for healing you're kicking entities out left exactly. right exactly right? exactly right. yeah so and that does that allow you to choose it well that's something you need to discern for yourself and are you willing to be because not everybody can handle it, right? So who, who the fuck, you know, that, especially when you are a therapist, you're working with people. Are you willing for your client to walk out? Most of them never come back. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a good thing. Can be a good thing because you're so yeah. effective. Yeah. So, and, and this is really that. That's part of your discernment. That's part of your boundaries. That's part of your knowingness, you know. That's part of your stepping into your potency what is required what what can that person hear and you're not doing it with every everybody because sometimes you get the awareness that you know if you would be doing it it wouldn't create it wouldn't create anything yeah so it's not the 
yet could uh, this this what 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 what's that word that cookie cutter thingy, you know you you know when to use it and when not to use it. Exactly. Right, but I, I actually often think when I allow myself to use it, I actually see it as an honoring of the person I'm talking to. Because I wouldn't do it if they can't handle it. And you have to be completely disentangled from the outcome as well. You, to, to be able to step into that space, you have to be totally open to whatever reaction you're going to get with absolutely no charge and polarity from yourself. It's quite a difficult space because quite often or not, you know, we try to protect ourselves from other people's reactions. You absolutely cannot do that in that situation. Yeah, and, and yeah, absolutely. It's a transparency, Alan says, and authenticity, and it can come from the heart. I mean, like Tom says, you know, he has people walk out when he when he does an intense statement, and how does it get better? Yeah, if that's oh, well, what I'm that. yeah. But are you willing to be judged? Can you receive that? That's that that shows when you are. And when you look at an AB, I mean, he, he, he sometimes, you know, he, he really demonstrates that. He's willing to be judged. He can receive that. Because it comes from a heart discernment, even though it doesn't necessarily often sound like it, you know? I think when it comes from the heart discernment, though, it never really hurts. It might be uncomfortable for the receiver, but it doesn't hurt in the long term. And they can go away and they can sit with that and dissect it. But they will feel the unconditional love that was in it from the heart. And when you, yeah, when it's delivered from that place, you can say anything. Absolutely. And it depends on the sovereignty of those beings as well, because... You know, when they're getting upset, if somebody's getting upset because you've made a bold and, and um, decisive statement or used, you know, intuitive anger, then, you know, really what you're speaking to is the self-defeating habit patterns and programs, any entities and attachments. It's not really the I am presence that's getting angry there. Sometimes the I am presence is so far behind all of that other noise that they can't even be heard. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And, you know, sometimes people will walk away but those are the ones that either do come back and say, thank you, I couldn't really, I didn't really want to hear it, but it made a difference. Or well, those are the ones that definitely made a difference and you never hear from them because they wouldn't be able to come back and actually say it did make a difference. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's what makes a good facilitator or therapist mm -hmm. or healer, whatever you want to call yourself. Yeah. Andrea, can I say something? Yes, Andrea. So just wanted to tell you this, that when we um, obviously when we have this hub here earth and wall and when we talk about something when we express something we obviously send the energy out for ourselves and when we are dreaming and it says here i just read this last sentence it says the bat flies at night and the night are born your dreams these are the dreams that build future civilizations so nourish them well so we are really nourishing and building not just obviously this hub but for ourselves whether we have clients or not have clients or whether we just have some water or whatever it is we do every day and it's very transparent to me as i was reading some things today that isn't it interesting that you put something in your mouth and it's disgusting and it stays there in another for another because you spit it out but we nurture in crap forever. <laughs> it's like with the womb, you know, like we, we create these ideologies or, or beliefs and we hold on to them like for dear life. But if we don't like the music, we just choose to change. If we yes. don't like the food, we and just choose to eat something. Yeah, it's so easy, right? Yeah. So the same technique for whatever is for our beliefs. It's the same technique, no different. Well, I, I've actually, you know, I heard something today because you say beliefs, the belief system, yeah? Look at the first, the belief system we have, yeah? Look at the, look at the first letters, BS, bullshit. <laughs> I thought it's so great, you know? We make our belief system so important, you know? It's just BS, really, isn't it? And what Martina touched upon is, or what 
she said earlier, it's about receiving. So I'm going to tell you what uh, I have I started to do. I mean, I've, I've been doing this, but when you do it like really, like even almost like you force yourself to it. So, so if I walk and I look at something and I judge it, I said, okay, I'm going to give up this ideology for today. And I work on it until it disappears. And I might cry or whatever, but it's okay. It's just, it's really yeah, allowing. So, it was so you know what? But it's like it's hard because it's just you know we judge everything is judgment, everything. But it's 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 you get into that rhythm, and it can open up so much. It doesn't mean that uh, let's say you're gonna start doing that or killing people or raping people or whatever. But you will be able to receive the person, not what the ideology or the, the food or the, or the animal or whatever it is. Yeah. So that means you will be able to receive and, you, and inside of self, especially the womb, will open up. Yeah, absolutely. Now, thanks for that. Now. There was something else I, I uh, we, there's so many messages now, but Alan was saying something. We were looking at getting a theme song, right? Thank you, Alan, for reminding us on this one. And we have two contestants. We have Caroline. And I'm not going to put you guys on the spot now, but have, have you guys had a chat, Caroline and Matty? Not yet. No. <laughs> no, no, we haven't. It's, it's an extremely busy time for me. Uh, I'm decorating the whole house at the moment and uh, we've got all kinds of other stuff going on. So give us a couple of weeks and we'll get our heads together. 100%. So you are, you are keen. Just tell us very straight. Oh, yes. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're keen. Okay, so if anyone wants to contribute to the two of them uh, to create, please, by all means, you have free will to do that. <laughs> And and you know what? It's only going to be, what, 10, 15 seconds, right, in the beginning. Then yeah. I will put it on, but I'll figure that out. But We need some decent equipment, though, just to record. It doesn't matter how long it is. It, you know, you need, you need the right equipment. I, I need a, a desktop studio and, and a decent mic. These are yeah. the things I've got, got to get hold of. That's actually what I'm getting for my birthday. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, it's on my list, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Okay, so it's in the making. What else can we do? What else? Anything else that comes up for you guys? Let's so make Martina, I was thinking about um, what you were talking about, how we could try to get more people on. Yes. And um, I don't think we would maybe speak to David to see if it would be OK to advertise it more on the friends on the friends of Andrew Bartz's page, because there may be people there who don't actually know about it. Yeah. So thanks for that, Matty. So what what I have um, in mind if AB is happy with that, you know, with our, with uh, Sean, you know, being so prolific with all his trans, uh, script, trans uh, scriptions, transcribing transcriptions, we've got the third one come up. We do it once a month, like we did last show. Did you enjoy it last time? I, th I thought it was really good. Oh, all this it was fantastic. Okay. So yeah. what, I want to do is, what we want to do is I want to get AB on again, because to be honest, guys, we need him, right? It's his material and we can, you know, throw stuff around, but I want new stuff. I want the new stuff, but that, that means one thing. We really have to read the transcripts and we really have to good questions. You know what, what he's like. If, if I really get him on uh, for the next show, whenever that is, I'll have to chat with him. Um, we had very good questions last time already. Okay. So really, Everybody who asked questions was fantastic. Let's out create that and ask really good questions. And the one thing is it's, it's about the script and anything that is related to that script. It won't be uh, private facilitations. I don't want to hear anything, you know, like uh, personal stuff unless it is really, really working properly for the, um, for, for the script. Yeah. It, would that be okay with you? And then and, and Laura already said that we're going to put that show we did with him. We're going to put it, it's fine. I mean, he's even in our Earthmobile uh, group, isn't he? Yeah. So we can, we, we will post that. What do you think? 
Yeah, I think so. I, I think that there's information on here that many people will be interested in. It's just that many probably just don't know about it. Yeah. And then that, that a good line. share it. There are not many shares of it. Just share it. Share it out to everyone. You know, you don't have to make any stories with it. Just send it out. Let's get it out there and then pull energy from an energetic perspective. We can pull lots of energy into the group. If we all start pulling energy into the Zoom, into the groups, with then I think we will get more. And I think uh, Alfredo said it, signature frequency matches that are coming in, that yeah. match that material, you know? And we can start posting in the Friends of Andrew Bartz's uh, website before the shows come on as well. Like an hour before the shows, someone can you know, start saying we've got this show coming on or just to bring a few other people in. Yeah. So, uh, so we're posting it now. Every time we do an invitation, we post it first in the Earth Nouveau. And then from there, we share it out because then everyone has already the link to the Earth Nouveau uh, group, right? And then, okay, that's Facebook now. I don't know what else uh, in terms of we can probably also... Word of mouth, of course, will, will work too. Um, and then what Laura did was great to get Lily on, you know, to ha hop on that uh, bandwagon, you know, with uh, people living close. Anyway, so let's just put it out there. I mean, look, I, I, I carry on with you guys. For me, for me, it's joyful. I don't, you know, but it will be nice to, to, um, to have some fresh meat <laughs> for Martina. <laughs> Offer it out too. Well, the, well, the, thing, uh, the thing is, Martina, you know, back at, when, when I'm sure you were the same as me, but back back when Andrew was all over the place, you know, I, I, I searched for him everywhere, every interview he did with anybody, because, you know, there's valuable information that might, you know, work for your equation. I think he did that in the last show as well. There was a lot of information there that needs really to be out there in the grander story. Yeah. Yeah. You no, know, and, and, and some people say it takes some time to, to figure out the timing, yes. And I know because UK, I mean, it's pitch dark out there now. So five o'clock works for obviously this hemisphere. And the, it's not too bad for you guys, right, on the other side. Because no, yeah, I think Arizona is the worst with seven hours. Or obviously, you know, Australia and all that. But I think, I think the timing, let's leave the timing for now because we've been really... So in the middle of the day, lunch. Well, lunch, maybe not a bad thing. People have some time. But even, it doesn't really matter because we can also, you can always go for the replays, right? Okay. Crack at noon for me. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, anything else <laughs> comes up? Anyone else uh, fucking them, Roman numeral? <laughs> yes. Let's take down the clock towers. But then what, what are we going to do then, right? <laughs> Pop up. Always be like all psychically, you know, connected. And you've asked, haven't you, Martina? If anybody, um, have you got Petruska coming on soon? If anybody she wants to do their own presentation, like Carolyn did, is is coming on with some art. We don't know yet, but she's putting some stuff together. So that goes out for everyone. Just like you know, we have people on who have already shown. There, that that is a show then for that particular person to show off their gifts to sh do a bit of marketing for themselves because otherwise there's no marketing in this group for ourselves necessarily um but you know anything you want to share or no, of course the other thing it's a study hub okay so if you have to go and do a um a workshop somewhere and you just want to run it by some peeps you can do that too, to practice some stuff for yourself, yeah? This is a uh, non-judgmental space here, okay? Even if we do get intense sometimes, we're not judging, right? So you can just come and do your thing and play, play. And uh, of course, we keep it all within, you know, respectfulness and, and all of that. And one thing I love about it is the variety we have in the guests and the topics and so on. I really like the, the variety that we offer. Yeah, I mean, that, that's one thing we won't change because this is contrast. We, we love contrast. This is this yeah. business, yeah? There's no such just one thing. And uh, in, it, everything has a root that is common and that's consciousness. We are conscious yeah. explorers, so we're exploring consciousness and that includes everything and judges nothing. 
So on the 17th, just a heads up, we've got um, Jonathan Hewitt coming on again. He's the pagan guy who did our, what did he do? Our winter solstice ceremony. So we've got him on to do our spring equinox. So bring your drums for that one. That's on the 17th. 17th, yes. Oh, 17th of March, yeah. I like him, good guy. He is, isn't he? Yeah, he's great. Oh, cake. He's got the cake there. Sorry, I thought you missed out on the cake. <laughs> Good. That's the most important, Martina. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then one day we'll meet in flesh, right? Yes, an Earth and Revive retreat. We'll meet. All yes, with cake, Sean, yes. <laughs> I'll make some special cakes that will get the party started. <laughs> yes add your special cakes matty <laughs> okay guys anything else before we close off thank you cool so every everyone's happy good and yeah. you if there's anything that comes up for anyone doesn't want to share it here then speak to either laura myself or mary and 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 we'll obviously look at look at anything that comes up yeah fantastic so we will meet again in a week's time and we don't have we haven't decided yet what we're going to do so it will all be in the group and we'll take it from there yes so thank you very much yeah. um thanks thank everyone you. thanks laura um for the meditation great great show great um discussion fantastic yeah thank you Au revoir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.